Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Exodus. I am your host, Ruel Barfield, and today we're going to take a second look at chapter 37 of Exodus. As we look at this chapter 37 of Exodus tonight, today, this afternoon, I'm going to look at the significance of gold. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take you first to Matthew, the second chapter, and tie the 37th chapter of Exodus to the second chapter of Matthew. This will be the, the last few weeks when we're in the book of Exodus. And so I want you to understand that next, the next book that we look at will be the book of Matthew. And so, so even tonight, I'm going to start to try to tie the two together. Get your paper, get your pencil, get your book, wherever you keep your Bible, your iPad, your iPod, and we'll start looking at the 37th chapter of the book of Exodus. Now, we looked at it last week. This week, we're going to take a different perspective. Is that all right? All right, here we go. Now, um, I, I often uh, will tell people that the Bible is Christocentric. In other words, you can find Christ in every book of the Bible. As a matter of fact, if you take Christ out of the Bible, you don't have a Bible. Everything is either leading up to or emanating from Christ. And so even when we look at Exodus and the building of tabernacle, the significance of Christ is there. And so we're going to start by looking at that. I'd like for you to turn with me. Uh, well, first of all, let's, let's talk about some of the, some of the materials used in the in the building of the tabernacle and you, you you've got to understand that the tabernacle is a place where god himself is going to commune is going to to rest is going to fellowship with his children of israel he's just given them the old um testament the old contract the old covenant the law He's just giving them the law. And after he gives them the law, he says, all right, now I, I, I want you to put this law in the ark and as part of the tabernacle, right? And the significance of what we're going to look at tonight, to me, it's just, it's just overwhelming. First of all, uh, the significance of gold, as we read through the 37th chapter of the book of Exodus, I want you to look at the significance of of gold in building the tabernacle. Now, gold is found in each of the three sections of the tabernacle. The, the gold is a characteristic material used in the Holy of Holies, but gold in general is a symbol of wealth, power, and majesty. It is seen as a symbol of purity, wisdom, and spiritual attainment. How so? You know that gold has to have a predominance in the tabernacle, but also in the tabernacle, we have two other um, items uh, that that I just want to mention, and we will tie them to the Book of Matthew. First of all, frankincense. Frankincense is used in the offering that's that's given in the uh, in the in the courtyard. Myrrh is the first ingredient in the mixture that was burned in the altar of incense by the priest in the holy place, um, which is the second room. And then we find gold is found in each of the three sections of the tabernacle. And so in the tabernacle, you find gold, you find frankincense, and you find myrrh in that place where God has decided, I will dwell, you find gold, you find frankincense and myrrh. In that place, after God has given the Ten Commandments, after God has given the foundation of the law, you will find gold, you will find frankincense, you will find myrrh. Now let's turn to Matthew, the second chapter. And I'm going to read through verse 9. Matthew 2, 1 through 9. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. You got to understand, these were not Jews. These were Gentiles. 
These were magi. They, they were they weren't they weren't in the tribe of Israel. They weren't under the nation of the chosen ones. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called the called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of all the law, he asked them where the Christ was born, was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent to them Bethlehem, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. How many of you know he wasn't planning to go and worship him? After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it had stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother. They saw the child with the mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Here it is. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, incense, of frankincense, and of myrrh. My brothers and sisters, as a baby... Having feet yet unable to walk, having a mouth yet un un unable to talk, having hands yet unable to perform miracles, he brings the Gentiles into the picture and they bring him what was necessary for building the tabernacle. The new covenant, the new contract, the new understanding, I, I'm going to do something different from law, but to build what I'm going to build, bring me what I need. I will need gold symbol of purity. I will need frankincense and I will need myrrh. Christocentric. Christ is in fact, my brothers and sisters, the center of the entire Bible. Without him, there is no Bible. Now, as we read quickly through Exodus again, 37th chapter, I know we went through it last week, but we did it from a different perspective. As we read through the 37th chapter of math of Exodus, I want you to understand the importance of gold, purity, the material used in the Holy of Holies, the material used in each of the three sections of the tabernacle, the symbol of wealth and power and majesty, seen as a symbol of purity, wisdom, and spiritual attainment. All right, let's go to 37, chapter of Exodus, verse 1. Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold both inside and out, and made a gold molding around it. He cast four gold rings for it and fastened them to its four feet and two rings on each side of, and two rings on the other. Then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. He made the atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim out of hammered gold. At the ends of the cover, he made one cherub on the other end, the second cherub on the other, and, and two ends he made them of one piece with the cover. The cherubim had their wings spread upward, sh overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the cover. They made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide and a cubit and a half high. Then they overlaid it with pure gold and they made a gold molding around it. They, all, they also made around it a rim of hand breadth wide and, a, and put gold molding on the rim. 
They cast four gold rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles and used in carrying the table. The poles were for carrying the table were made of acacia wood and were overlaid with gold. And they made and they made from pure gold the articles for the table, its plates and dishes and bowls and its pitchers for the pouring out of drink offerings. They made the lampstand of pure gold and hammered it out base and shaft its flower like cups buds and blossoms were of one piece with each six branches extended from the sides of the lampstand three on one side and three on the other three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on one branch and three on the next branch and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And, and on the lampstand were four cups shaped like almond flowers with, with buds and blossoms. One bud was under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand. A second bud under the second pair and a third bud under a third pair. Six branches in all. The buds and the branches were, were all of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. They made its seven lamps as well as wick trimmers and trays of pure gold. They they made the lampstand and all its accessories from one talent of pure gold. They made the altar of incense out of acacia wood. It was square and cubit and a cubit long and a cubit wide and two cubits high. Its horns of one piece with it. They overlaid the top and all the sides and all the horns with, you guessed it, gold, pure gold, and made a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below the molding, two on opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. They also made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense, the work of the perfumer. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Gold, 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 gold. Gold is in the tab. Gold is used to build the place where God would come and commune. And the first gift that the three wise men gave baby Jesus, gold. Why? Because he's building something. He's building a new covenant. He's building a new contract. He's building a new understanding. I, 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 I know that the law was important, but I'm building grace and I want to start it with the symbol of wealth and power and majesty. I want to start it with pure, the, the symbol of purity and wisdom and, and spiritual attainment. I want to start it with gold. My brother, my sister, no matter what you build in life, no matter what you, you put together in life, no matter what you believe your ministry is or your profession is or your work is, make sure you overlay it with gold. Make sure that there's some power and majesty. Make sure that there's spiritual uh, wisdom and purity and attainment of spiritual things. One songwriter put it this way. No matter what you do in life, it, you may build a grand cathedral, large and tall. You may build a, a skyscraper. Or you may conquer all the failures of your past. But remember, only what you do for Christ will last. What, what, what am I saying to you? Don't forget that your building has to be tied to the Christ that is pure, that that is um, majesty, that, that has wealth and power. Keep connected to the gold. And in the 37th chapter of the book of Exodus, we see the importance of gold and building the place where God would commune with his people. And in the second chapter of Matthew, who? We see the first gift that these Gentiles, and even as a baby, Christ is starting to bring the Gentiles into the fold. And so bring me what I need to build what I must build. And the first thing they give this baby Jesus, lying in a manger, gold. I'm looking forward to, and I hope that you will join us as we as we end the, the book of Exodus and we begin to look at what we're going to deal with next. We're going to deal with the book of Matthew. We're going to leave 
we, we've gone through the whole book of Genesis. We've gone through the whole book of Exodus. And now we're going to jump through the book of Matthew. I hope you'll join us. Listen, you know I love you. You know I do. But you know and I know that God loves you more. And so i tell you what I want you to do. Until next week, I want you to tell a friend. I want you to tell an enemy about just how good God is. Not how good he is to, to you, but how good he is, period. You know that I love you. I hope to see you next week. Go to Ruel Barksdale 2515 YouTube channel, Ruel Barksdale 2515 to get all of our studies. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.